for NT uh, for Dominic Crossan, the political situation of first century Judaism about how it played out, Christianity played out in terms of its re it, its relationship to Rome because there was a, a contrast made I think also by N.T. Wright between Caesar who was seen as God, Caesar's kingdom, Caesar's power and Dominic Crossan and N.T. Wright I think both made the point in different ways that when Jesus uh, was proclaimed uh, as the risen Lord that this was really a, a counter cultural thing going on politically completely denying the kingship the authority of Caesar and so I think that both of them wanted to consider the, the cash question well how does this resurrection whether symbolic or physical whether how does it play out in our understanding of politics and, and society today and, and, and to put in Dominic Crossan's uh, words um, how do the rogues or something like this not exactly his words but generally speaking he said how the rogues get justice that's what I want to know he says concerning your view of the resurrection how do the rogues get justice so what are my thoughts about the debate? I thought the debate was wonderful. I, I thought that Dominic Crossan is a wonderful guy. He, he just really makes me laugh. He's, he, he's so funny and he's so warm uh, and he's so lovable. And N.T. Wright uh, makes me stand in awe sometimes at the sheer knowledge that he brings out concerning uh, first century Judaism. Uh, you can see that he completely has grasped his subject and when he did this debate it wasn't long ago before he'd finished his book uh, on the resurrection so all the knowledge that he gained through that research came into this debate. Um, I think what I got out of the debate is that there is a strong argument to press to skeptics and that argument is this how do you explain the rise of Christianity how do you explain the different theological trajectories of Christianity as opposed to Judaism for example Paul uh, N.T. writes two sphere resurrection how do you account for that as opposed to the one sphere resurrection in various parts of Judaism and so there are questions that the skeptics I think need to, to ask and the burden of proof is often put on the Christian to prove the resurrection but I think it works two ways I think there's a burden of proof on the skeptic to answer some very tough historical questions and the question the questions that the skeptic needs to answer is how did first century Judaism metamorphose into Christianity and how did Christianity come about what is your historical explanation and what I think is that those explanations that come don't really take into consideration all the data so for example you get um, you will get uh, Richard Carrier and he will say that um, Jesus is just part of the Mithridina rising gods. And two problem, two three problems with Richard Carrier, the atheist, uh, who's the main scholar for the atheists these days on the resurrection. Three problems there. He uses the Bayes theorem, so his pre his method, historical method, is just incorrect. Nobody uses the Bayes theorem uh, in historical inquiry or if they do that it's a very rare thing but um, the base theorem basically comes down to the computation that you put into to your assess of what you want to assess so you you basically put in the probabilities 
of a particular historical situation based on um, the basic factual information that you can gain and then from that basic factual information the likelihood probability of X and Y 